I'm the third generation in the business. My grandfather started the business uh, after he came home from World War II with his GI bonus. It originally started as a wood pattern shop and evolved over the years into a plastics uh, producing business. We've evolved from regular vacuum forming to pressure forming, and we've been a part of Society of Plastics Engineers, both through my father and myself for over 35 years. So at Productive Plastics, a lot of our role is protecting a business's assets and making sure that they can produce their product. There was nobody that really addressed the issue with, I have a lot of different shaped parts. Uh, I don't want to invest heavily in fixtures that would cost more, possibly in some cases, than the fixtures I use to process my parts as a plastic part. And I couldn't take on a solution that would create more problems than it would resolve. Especially when it came to uh, having new hires, uh, I would expect a lot of workmanship defects to happen as a result of somebody learning the job. We're having to uh, integrate into an environment where maybe four months ago they were delivering pizzas somewhere or they were in retail and now I have to explain to them how to do a high-end precision feel activity. So uh, a lot of the type of equipment that we do we're a low amount of cost for the unit but we're a hundred percent of the interface with that customer's end customer. So uh, kind of like putting the clothes on the product. So it's critical that we deliver our parts, plus our parts tend to be the last thing that they put on their bill. When we would have a person who was uh, doing the sanding of the products, uh, there was an issue with the consistent pressure that the person would apply and the angle of pressure that they would apply. Cycle times uh, on the same part from one person to another uh, could vary greatly as much as, you know, 50% higher or lower based upon who was doing it. The bigger piece is that we turned over long-term employees. So we went to the average tenure of an employee of about 24 years. Now with a new generation coming in, we're averaging close to seven to eight years of experience uh, within the business. But it gives you an idea of how many people. It's always a challenge because uh, people are looking for depth of image. They're looking for consistency across their platforms. They're looking for colors that are the same, finishes that are the same. So as we scale, how do we get a consistent finish, consistent look, uh, a consistent way to approach our products? Uh, and that's what automation allows for us. So after the second uh, robotics integration failed, I found Gray Matter uh, really looking for what other options were there in the marketplace. In the past, it might take us two to four months to ramp up by the time you bring in people and sufficiently train them. Now we're able to uh, run that machine more. So ramping up is more a factor of machine hours and not uh, effectiveness of new people coming into the process, which takes a lot of pressure off the ramp up as well as pressure off new employees, pushing them to be better at a skill that they may not be suited for immediately. And I was skeptical at first, but since we've implemented this, uh, it's been beneficial to us in making our products more uh, consistent, uh, better quality coming out of the paint booth. I think one of the things that surprised me the most about the scan and sand system was not the sanding portion of it, but the scan portion, where it actually will scan the parts uh, and recognize the parts and how many parts are on the table uh, before it actually does the sanding. I think it's really cool to be able to put the part anywhere within that table, within that boundary box, for the robot to be able to scan and pick up that part in any position. Scan and sand is not difficult. Pretty much everything is right there, self-explanatory. Just follow the steps and everything is right there for you. I was able to change people's minds because I showed them that we're not gonna eliminate anybody, but we're gonna grow people in other positions because now we take relief from the sanding part and then add them in their growth to the paint correction, the buffing, and have them increase their value as well. It didn't take jobs, it actually produced a little bit more jobs. With the Gray Matter robot, what became key was consistency. 
uh, better quality coming out of the paint booth, less rework, be able to scan and sand uh, multiple parts at a time if they're laid out on the, on the table properly. Eliminated all those problems I was having with variability from person to person. That's helped improve quality. Uh, that's helped certainly improve cycle times so that now I can consistently say I know how long a part's going to take to sand it before it goes to paint. Robotics as a service, all of that is a new environment for productive plastics. I think as you look to stay competitive in a global marketplace uh, and also a shrinking supply chain, tools like these have to be embraced by owners uh, and you have to create the right team and structure that's going to be able to take advantage of those things. Wait, you named your ro the robot Selena? I did. Uh, so I picked the name because, you know, it's California, even though she, Selena's from Texas, but the robot dances. So she danced very smoothly and it just the first name that came to mind, just seeing her move around with Selena and it was perfect.